Hello everyone. Okay, so let's talk about text editors. So of course, writing code is writing text. Moreover, uh, when explaining yourself in mathematics, uh, you will typically use LaTeX. That's also writing code, therefore writing a lot of text. You don't just write it down, but you have to continuously edit and re-edit what you're writing. So an enormous amount of time is spent just navigating the text, finding what you want to change, making small changes, jumping to another place, and then repeating this procedure. Also, with writing code and writing math, you want to copy-paste certain things and make changes all at once to the things that you've just copied. Uh, so people have been coding for decades and they've came up with a solution to this. And they built excellent text editors. So they don't look like Notepad. And uh, what you want in a good text editor is, for example, the ability to script the text editor. So you can write code in the text editor for the text editor, and then you can call uh, these commands so that uh, your custom command will be applied to the text that you've written. So th this is an amazing feature because then you and of course others in the community can basically write any add-on that you can imagine. And then uh, this makes your text editor into a small operating system. Almost everything will have, every good ed editor will have some degree of configurability. So this is, for example, what sets apart really good text editors from Notepad. One thing that I've already mentioned in the previous videos was the uh, ability, for example, for these text editors to have syntax highlighting. That means uh, function names will be a different color. Sometimes it realizes the input will be a different color. Comments will be a different color and so on. And this makes it very easy for your eyes, for your mind to scan through text, find mistakes, jump to the right place and make uh, edits. It's, it's extremely important to uh, learn a good text editor. And there are many of them out there. And I want to basically to talk about two categories of them. And then from each category, I will give you two examples. So amongst the, uh, well, in the first category, uh, this, let's call them mature editors. So this has been around for 40 years or more. And uh, one of them is called Vim and the other one is called Emacs. And uh, since they've been created long ago, I don't have a lot of bells and whistles out of the box. Moreover, somehow in the spirit of the times, They've been created for masters. There's not a lot of um, help at the beginning, in the sense that it's, it's hard to get started. And it will take uh, years and years and years, and you can get better at them for decades. And that's what people do. So it's like playing an instrument. You get better and better at them. Right, so let's, let's start with Vim. This is what I use. So it's out of the box. It's relatively lightweight. It, it has superb design of functionality. So it has two, let's say, two principal modes of operation, more, but in one mode is when you're typing text and the text appears on your screen. But with a hit of a key, you change from this mode into an editing mode. Now remember, you are typically editing elaborate text such as code. So you spend most of your time, in fact, editing complicated texts. And this is what it's designed for. In this mode, in the editing mode, every key on your keyboard does something. And you can chain them together. So you, if you have, you have small words that you can type, and then they will do uh, very complicated, sophisticated looking um, objects. They will move and jump to a place and then delete something and then paste it somewhere else. And you'll do this at three, uh, with three keys. So this is uh, really amazing. And of course, this is also configurable, scriptable, and there's a very good community that uh, makes this editor grow. But okay, so the other uh, alternative is Emacs. So Emacs is also a mature editor. Uh, well, the community has built in something that looks like an operating system by now. So you never have to leave uh, Emacs. You can do everything there, including browsing and writing your emails and organizing and your calendar business. So for that reason alone, uh, it's worth learning Emacs. Now let's talk about young editors. So the young editors, uh, I have 
I've chosen two, there are many, there are many good ones. I've chosen two, uh, Atom and Sublime. Uh, for example, with Atom, you can highlight a part of your text, click on it, and then make it execute, get it to be executed in uh, some software, and then the output will be printed right under it, or a, if it's plotting a graph, the graph will pop up. So these, these are out of the box right there, and uh, quite fun, actually. So you can do these with Vim and Emacs, but you'll have to sweat a little bit and it won't be quite as polished. Um, and Sublime uh, is also used extensively for coders. I don't have much to say there. Um, I have not used it. But um, you can... So the, both of them, <laughs> both Atom and Sublime have excellent websites, unlike Vim, that uh, demonstrate how beautiful they are. But I don't think they need my advertisement. So you just have to go at uh, their websites and play around a little bit. So uh, my suggestion for this part is you know, look at all four of these editors, look at their websites, maybe look at uh, online, what people say about them on online forums. And then um, either try a few or make a choice and then start learning. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you.